this time of year. Much needed. Definitely, yeah. The chocolate's very fancy. I, oh. I haven't quite gotten there yet, but to be a, a gin flavoured, soft scented chocolate, I think. Yeah, I, I think a company, a few companies, have worked on that. Yeah, so that'll be something in there, a potential offering. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Ah, uh, this is amazing. I'm still enjoying this, and I love starting off with this style of gin for the, the start of tastings. And while I've while I've still got a little bit of this one left in my glass. Clyde, just to get a little bit geeky um, on things, you've got a 420 litre still um, at your distillery there. Can we talk us a little bit about, I guess, your still there and your distillation methods and the way you go about things? Yep, that's right. I've got um, 420 litre still. It's about 300 litre when you're um, each run. It is, it's a hybrid still, so part pot and part column it's it's only it's got a four plate column so it can do a little bit of uh concentration uh the other most important aspect of it it has a gin basket so um i can vapor infuse so i guess pe most people know the basic two techniques maceration of the botanicals or or a vapor infusion which is that process is generally more gentler extraction um and i use both techniques so that first gin the dry gin has is made in a single shot, uh, and it's some some ingredients are in the boiler and some ingredients are in the gin basket. So the gin basket's very versatile for um well for the second gin that you'll try. Where if you just want to distill individual spices, you can do that in the gin basket. Um, it's yep. very good for hand, handling very uh, aromatic botanicals, some some that you don't want to have too much heat. So yeah, it's, I'm a big fan of that style of um, production sure and uh and this is absolutely gorgeous and uh owen the the people are asking code for tonight do we have one what is it i think How can we yeah use it? it's still juniper according to jose yes so 10 yep. percent off a little bit of a thank you for the people who join us in these tastings uh give a little back everyone gets a get a bit of gin Bit of happiness. Absolutely. That's what, what it's all about. So the, the code for tonight is Juniper, all capitals. Um, most of the bottles we have tonight will be available for purchase on our... Also the tasting, our next tasting, we're going to announce that shortly. Yep. Um, and as, as well as as well as this, we encourage you guys to go check out um, all the web pages from these distilleries and have a look at all the interesting, amazing products these guys have as well. Um, as the gins we're trying tonight because uh, I know in the case of, of all of these distilleries, there's some other really interesting offerings as well. Um, so I reckon, uh, I know I know we're, we're skipping through it, but you know how much I like a GNC, Alan. So I think it's an understatement. Maybe, yes. maybe we just crack into this number two, um, this number two the Sinjin um, from Big Real Life. So I think that's a good way to do it tonight. And, and that way we can, uh, we can chat a little bit more to Clyde and get to know a little bit more about the gin rather than going back and forth too much. So if you've got your Big River... Distilling Co. Sin Gin there, which I hope you do. Give that a good old pour into your glass and Bob will be your uncle. Now, I guess the name for this one probably is a bit of a giveaway. Sin, C-I-N-N, -N, not of the S-I-N variety. Um, and so I straight away think, well, this has got to be cinnamon, right? And on the nose, you can tell it is. Um, there's almost, there's like a little bit of a, bit of apple in there it kind of tastes like an apple pie oh, there a, it is in a very good way there it is huh? See, there's always that little thing and then you hit it and it's perfect i can't even put it into words that's beautiful yeah so clive with with this one what was your thought process why a singe and it's probably the first of its kind in many ways yeah you're right sin short for cinnamon um it started started life as a christmas gin and um it's sort of got a life of its own after that. Uh, it was The intention was just to have a short-term release, but of course people liked it and people came back and asked for it. So I give people what they want. Yes, yeah, so um, I guess yeah, the, the idea was to produce a summertime drink for Christmas time that you could serve cold on ice for Australian setting. So that's what I came up with. Um, it features cinnamon, 
Uh, there's also star anise, nutmeg and clove, the other Christmas spices there. And as you said, there's also the apple component. And I use pink lady apples. They're quite an aromatic apple. But the issue with the apples, the apple's quite subtle when you, especially when you've got those other spices involved. So it's a, it's a more of a complexing aroma, not, not a dominant aroma, but there, there is the, the easy apple there. Yes, yeah, so that's how it came together. It, um, it's a totally different style compared to the first style. It's 44% uh, alcohol, so it's a lot going on. And I guess yeah. when you have it neat, it looks, uh, you know, it looks quite complex and strong. It, when you add the ginger ale, something happens quite magically. So it ch totally changes. So this one, I don't know how, where I came up with the idea with ginger ale, but um, it, I just well, probably just mucking around sampling stuff and uh, it, yeah. the ginger and the spices complement each other and it just worked. So well, really, yeah. one, one of the things that really hit me again is I, I think it's that winemaker you talked about balancing. Both of these have just been so well balanced and nothing is super overpowering. They're all complementing each other. The star anise, the apple, the cinnamon. It's not super spicy and gives you that tinge. It's, it's absolutely delicate. It's very, very well it's integrated. Insane. It's so palatable. And, and the, the ginger ale, well, I mean, I guess, hey, we're pretty lucky tonight that we've got a little bit of fever tree spice orange ginger ale with us. So maybe it's time to poke this in. And as I say, like, Owen, like, I could enjoy this neat for sure. Oh, wrong time. And the ABV doesn't, like, push through as well. 44%, you know, it's... It's a bit dangerous at 44%, right? This is really, really, really good gin. It's quite smooth and, and definitely that apple pie, you know? Yeah. Who doesn't want an apple pie gin? Homemade pie. We love apple gins. Um, and now, yep, put a little bit of the... Uh, it's a boy. A little bit of the ginger ale. And uh, then to garnish, uh, we've got... Surprise, surprise, a little bit of a cinnamon stick. So in your pack there, you should have a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, break it in half. Put it in your glass. Swirl it around. And let's take a moment to enjoy this gin and ginger. Oh, the aromat's coming mm. off that. Punchy. Yeah. But punchy, the, the, it's not the alcohol. It's that cinnamon just complimenting perfectly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, that is absolutely gorgeous. It, it's got, I, I, and, I, and I feel like some of those botanicals, even that's starting to, and it always does when you whack the tonic in there, it brings the botanicals out in a different way. But I feel like I'm probably getting maybe even some like, I don't know if you've got any lemon in there or lemon myrtle or something, but it feels like a little bit of lemon's coming through now as well, Clyde. Yeah, not not, not so much lemon. It's a citrus. It doesn't, doesn't feature any citrus. Yeah. Uh, apart from coriander. So mm. coriander does have a citrus component. So yeah. That and juniper working together. Jose, Jose says good with cloudy apple juice. And I wholeheartedly agree, like, like spiced apple yep. crumble in a drink. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you want to make a really stiff drink, get a good cider and uh, oh, that will like work it. with it as well. But, <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's amazing. It's very versatile. I've had it, um, there's a bar in Sydney that make what's called a Sin Groni. So it's their version of a Negroni, but swapping it out. Uh, standard gin for the sin gin, so um, definitely one I'd like to try. Fever Tree, bless them, they've come up with multiple ginger ales now. So you've got the spiced orange, they've got a standard one, they've got a smoky ginger ale. So yeah. worth checking those out. If so something around, it. and and Laura, Laura, and, and Deb and Dave have all said a bit of Christmas in a glass. I get that vibe as well for sure. Got a lot mm. of Christmasiness going to it. And so I guess, you know, when you originally made it for Christmas, it's uh, very fitting. You did, you've done quite well with this, Clyde. It's, uh, it's a, an exceptional little number. Thank you. I've now got a headache because I have to come up with another proper Christmas gin again. Because <laughs> all, all the customers demand a limited release, thanks to Paul Pillars. But, uh... Yeah, well, everyone's got to have a Christmas gin now. We know we had all too well and we love them here. We've... Uh, We've gone through a few ourselves, and uh... yeah, I think I'm towards the end of both my Christmas gins. It's that, it's that palatable and that lovely cinnamon flavors. Yeah, um, I've still got a few there that I'm savoring. Looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Absolutely. So, Clyde, one one question we always like asking, um, because we're sticky beaks, is Big River Distilling 
what's I guess what's next? What are you guys working on? Is there anything fun um, that you guys have in the works, or what's sort of the uh, the the idea for how you want the next few years to go? Yeah, well, um, I'm keen to get my gin in front of everyone in every, all capital cities. So that's yeah, one of the goals. Um, in terms of styles, yeah, I've got a long list. I um, one most nearest release is a pink gin. Uh, a root, I'm working on rhubarb flavored gin, which yeah. I'm trying that's going down a. Uh, it's not. It's not a ready to drink sweet. It's a full serious gin. So um, yeah. Anyway, that's that's been quite common in requests. Um, yeah, maybe in a higher strength gin as well, just because yeah. you can pack a lot more flavor in. Um, yeah, so that'd be something to watch out for down the track. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. Do you reckon you'll go for the the navy strength? You'll go straight up to the fifty seven, or try and hover a little bit more down that sort of southern yeah. strength that we're seeing a few people do. I, I like the southern. Some some of the gins are driven by alcohol, which I think that's we might be using that as a substitute for flavour and and, or, and botanicals. So I like to me, I wouldn't pick one particular ABV. I'm going to make a a gin with lots of character and just see where the ABC sits relative to the to the, the other things. So yeah, I won't. I'll, it probably won't be a a um, navy strength. Just yeah, just to higher ABV. And I, you've got to keep the little the sticker price down a little bit with the without with our lovely tax laws that we have for spirits. <laughs> I feel that one. Um, and I guess finally, Clyde. Um, just before we go on to the next gins and we'll come back to you at the end as well. And we hope you enjoy tasting along with the gins tonight too. Uh, at the uh, distillery door you've got there in the ACT, where is it? How can we sort of, how can we get there? How can we book? And um, what have you guys got going on there? Yeah, so next time you're in Canberra, just drop in. We open Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Um, it's called Dairy Road. One, one Dairy Road, Fishwick is the address. So we're on the edge of the lake there. Um, and yeah, if, if you don't ask, if you we're well, next to Capital Brewing, so that's a good uh, reference point. Most people know where that is. So you can come for a G and T first, and then you can go and have a beer and burger, and then go for your chocolates afterwards. So yeah, you can spend half a day there easily. So. Sounds ideal. Uh, sounds Love like it. an absolute rip snort every time. So Clyde, thank you, and it's been awesome trying these gins, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the ones that we've we've got on offer t- tonight as well. Um, and also, uh, I want to pop them in the chat, I believe, the, the links for yeah. these. We'll slap the Sinjin in there now yeah. as well. We'll put it in there now. And if you like these, you can grab it with, with the discount um, code, or you can also go straight to the distillery and you can um, see what they've got going on as well on their websites too. Um, this is what we do. It's all about learning about new distilleries and tasting new amazing gins, which we've, uh, which we've been able to do tonight. And, and that's, been, that's been awesome. So... Next, we're going to head to Underground Spirits in Canberra. And we're very lucky to be joined tonight by Colly, who looks like she's getting all of her things ready there to, to get going. Colly, how are you? I'm rising on. It's better. Works better. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, How's it not going? Yeah. Good, good, good. I'm actually in Newcastle as well, trying to bring that spirit of Canberra up in New South Wales. So it's exciting. Yeah, amazing. You, you've done very well, colleagues, to uh, last minute jump in here and be able to um, share everything about Underground Spirits with us. And we're so thankful to have you and, and these amazing gins here. Just quickly, um, what do you, what's your role at Underground Spirits and how do you fit into the scheme of things there? Yeah, so I'm, I'm the brand ambassador. So I come from, a, I used to be bar manager. So I come from a bar background and was really passionate about spirits. And so I introduced underground spirits into the bar where I was working a couple of years ago now. And that's how I met them. Just, I just fell in love with the Shiraz gin first. And then I really, really enjoyed working with them. So I just sort of jumped, changed job and went working with them. So now I rep for them. Uh, go to bars and restaurants and promote the spirits as well as organizing events, creating cocktails, all of that, and a bit of production as well whenever it's needed. Sometimes we get a bit under the pump, so <laughs> go over there and help Stuart, who's a head this today. Absolutely. Jack of all trades yeah. of sorts. That's oh. it. Making hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, 
Well, and that oh. Shiraz, Shiraz Jim we're talking about, we're going to try that second, um, but it is bloody delicious, as is the first. So let's pour the first on, um, I'm ready. which is this beautiful underground spirits. Now, I've written Canberra Gin on there, um, but I think it, it's sort of maybe more um, modern Australian sort of style. I don't know. Tell, tell us about the uh, underground spirits, Canberra Gin, Golly, as we pour it in and have a um, so the signature gin, I would say it's more of a London dry style gin as it is very ginny before, it's very spicy. Uh, you have the peppercorn and Tasmanian pepper berries adding um, on the base, actually, our core botanicals. We use the angelica roots so that makes it quite bitter, a little bit like London dry style gin. The coriander seeds doesn't taste like coriander. <laughs> it gets a lot, a lot of coriander. He just go like, ah, coriander. No, it's a seed, so it's very different. Um, and then with the lemon myrtle, so going more into the Australian native, we have native river mint and lemon myrtle, so a little bit citrusy, sort of yeah. softening a little bit the juniper, but still very pungent and very juniper forward. Definitely super fragrant, and uh, the tazzy pepperberry in there as well. It's an amazing botanical to distill with, and you can just feel it coming through. And the, the tazzy pepperberry is I guess, I guess what you get on the back of your palate. Um, and it in many ways sort of acts in a similar way to juniper. So juniper will normally come at the, at the front, um, but the tassie pepperberry sort of like lingers. And yeah. as you notice when you when you taste this, your, your mouth sort of coats a little bit in this spiciness. That's the tassie pepperberry that sort of kicks through. And it's one of probably along with lemon myrtle, I think our best native Australian um, botanicals to, to distill with it. It's an amazing little treasure we've got down here in Australia. So, Collie, uh, this gin that we're, we're trying now, um, I reckon maybe I'll add a little bit of tonic um, to it as well as the garnish, and then we can start having a little bit more chat about um, underground spirits and, and everything that, that you guys are. So for this one, we've gone with the, the rest of your fever treat Mediterranean at home. Again, I mean, and, and I think that everyone here, as we do these tastings, this is probably, I mean, this is a seventh stop in our, in our gin tour of Australia, but I guess this is probably maybe the 10th gin tasting we've done. Everyone's sort of getting to the point where we're, we're using a little bit less tonic when it comes to the gins. Um, and, and that's a, you know, a, a good thing that it's, it's just showing people a, that one's a little bit safer. I didn't take your head off. I was waiting for it. All right. Went until his knife. And, we and we're starting at a lower point. And Jose said this in the chat as well. Um, he starts at one to one. I go a little bit more, but I mean, my pores are normally about 50, 60 mil anyway. Uh, so it probably works out about the same. Start low, work your way up. With this one, we're going to go with the dehydrated orange. So you should have a little bit of a dehydrated orange in your pack. Pop that in. And I mean, in my eyes, I don't know if there's any better combo than TV Tree Mediterranean with a beautiful mm, London dry style, but definitely sort of contemporary Australian influenced mm. gin like this. Cheers, Owen. Cheers. Oh, oh yum. Classic. This is yeah, this this is what I want on a Sunday afternoon. So Colly, <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about uh underground spirits and everything about you guys and how you started the lot. I want to know it all. I like to make a joke. Underground spirits is born in the um, in the hands of a, an obstetrician, conveniently. <laughs> so we we're created by Toby Youngsman back in 2017. So Toby Youngsman, he is an obstetrician and a fertility specialist. So he started on his quest to make the best vodka possible and the cleanest and purest that he could and thought, I can do it. And he created and patented a unique cryofiltration process. Uh, which is called where, which is why we're called underground spirits. It's this idea of freezing of spirits of below zero, and also because he was tinkering like a mad scientist in his basement, pretty much to develop the filtration process. So cryofiltration it means pretty much that we freeze our spirits before we filter them. So the effect it has it as it frees all the micro particles which are in the alcohol. Yeah. And and by freezing they get bigger, and then we filter them twenty times. It goes through 20 different filters, which are medical grade. So it's quite a lengthy process, but that allows us to have such a smooth gin. Our signature gin is probably the most pungent of our spirits, and still, I think it's pretty nice and smooth to drink. 
I do enjoy to have a nice tonic. So Mediterranean, Mediterranean tonic configure tree goes very well with it as it's quite botanical, uh, quite sweet as well. So it balances out the pungency of the juniper berries. Mm. And then the dehydrated orange will for the little story, we it's sort of a signature garnish as Toby's dad now as retired trees in Adam and Abby. Anyway, he loves dehydrating fruits. So every time we do an event, he dehydrates heaps of fruits and we'll always have oranges. Yeah. This. Amazing. <laughs> oh, awesome. So like it's amazing. Your, yeah. your background, Collie, when, when you're a bar managing and yeah. that sort of thing, was that in Canberra as well? That was in Canberra, yes. It was as in a, Canberra? As a Hyatt, yes. Yeah. I, yeah. And I guess so a good question for you would be, in, in, like the, in the Canberra sort of hospitality scene, are you seeing a bit of a shift in, in bars, um, restaurants and that sort of thing, moving more towards this amazing sort of natural style of produce? Definitely, definitely. Especially, I think with COVID, there has been a lot more sales. On, like everyone is focusing on local because we realised how we can't be so much relying on overseas and it was harder to get from overseas. And we're sort of like, we're together and helping each other. And we had lots of people who bought gin and they say like, I've never actually tried gin before. I don't actually drink gin, but to make the hand sanitizer. And I thought it was very nice. So <laughs> then they get converted into gin. It's quite funny. <laughs> it's yeah. great. And, and gin is definitely out there, uh, still in trend. It's been a few years now and it's still going strong. And it's amazing to see the possibilities and, and the evolution of it over the past few years. Like every distillery is creating with so many different botanicals, the possibilities are endless, and I love how everyone is exploring all those possibilities. Yeah, well, if they love drinking your hand sanitizer, no wonder they love drinking your gin as well. Uh, <laughs> this is this is cracking. Uh, in, in terms of the the distillery uh, itself, where abouts are you guys located, um, and is it open to the public and that sort of thing? What's the vibe? So we are in Gamba, it's a little shop front. It is a family business <laughs> to start with. Um, so Claudia was, um, I couldn't make it tonight, she's a CEO and so she's a sister of Toby. We'll have the other sister cats coming as well. So so it is a family business in the little shop front uh, in Gamba shops. <laughs> and so we are usually open nine to five, Monday to Friday, Strat is there doing like distilling and all, but being a small business, sometimes it's at the back distilling. So we're not advertising so much as being an open shop front. Um, but if you're in Gamba between nine to five on a Monday to Friday, by all means, just pop in, say hi, have a chat with Strat. He's always there making the goods. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're, we're about to try um, the Shiraz gin, which is just gorgeous. Before we pour that, because I've still got a little bit left in this glass and and I, and I can't wait to pour this one on. You're in for an absolute treat, mate. I'm very um, excited. These two gins, love them, try them, and can't wait for everyone else to try this Shiraz here tonight as well. What else is, uh, I guess, in, in your portfolio there, uh, Underground Spirits, uh, as well as these two amazing gins we're trying tonight? So we have the signature vodka. Like I mentioned before, that was the first one we created. And then probably our most popular, the caramel vodka. Mm. Oh, Oh my! <laughs> you got good. someone's attention. <laughs> Dangerous, <laughs> dangerously delicious. Yeah, um, yeah. This is probably the hallmark of how good our cryofiltration process is, as you can't actually really feel the alcohol. It just goes so smooth, and it's this nice hit in the throat, but it doesn't burn. You know, it's just warming nicely and goes very well. Yeah, in espresso martini, uh, with yeah. Claudia produce and cinnamon. It tastes like an apple pie. It's beautiful as well. Oh, caramel vodka. Put your hand yeah. up in the chat if you think that we should get some caramel vodka from Underground Spirits on the oh, shelf, yes. on the shelf here definitely. in Casa de Vino's. Five comments and Jose yeah. has to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess cocktail-wise as well, you, what what sort of cocktails do you normally see go well with, with your sort of signature, the Underground Spirits Cambridge in? Uh, I like to say very traditional with this one. So gin and tonic. Uh, I like to say a rosemary and dehydrated orange works very well. Um, yeah, I 
a more of a traditional, we do have a signature on Negroni as well with it. So what we've done with it is, because I know Negroni is this kind of cocktail and I've seen it being in a bar, everyone is like, oh yeah, we'll order a Negroni, same with the Martin, because I've never had one before. And they don't know what they're getting to. <laughs> it's like, it'll be bitter, it'll be pungent and all of that. So what we've done is we've tweaked it to make it a little bit more accessible. So uh, we're still using the Campari, but we're using Rosé instead of Vermouth. And we add to that a little bit of vanilla syrup. So you still have your one part of each, one part signature gin, one part Campari, one part rosé, go for local rosé, um, Lake George has a nice one, and then some vanilla syrup. So Amazing. Okay. Sounds, sounds like a right? yeah. <laughs> And I think there's enough hands that have gone up in the chat there as well. So I think the Underground Spirits Caramel Vodka, it's going to be on the shelf. And I, I, reckon, <laughs> yeah. I reckon I've got a good spot for it right here I reckon get it in somewhere there um i'm gonna have to zoom back out now uh and i think that that's that's awesome and maybe we can pop it in one of our tastings coming up yeah hopefully do a cocktail yeah. tasting with it uh without further ado i'm so excited to pour this shiraz barrel gin and and for a couple of reasons i i guess for me yeah. when i tried this one at, at the start I thought, all right, we're, we're going to have a another Shiraz macerated gin. So like your, your Four Pillars, like um, your Never Never with their Janash, like your Barossa Distilling Co., like these amazing, amazing gins, which we love, which are post-distillation maceration with the grape. I initially thought that this was going to be this, that this was their amazing Canberra gin, but then macerated with some with some Shiraz grapes, but it's not. It's Shiraz barrel aged, um, oh. and and it's got a lot of color from that as well. And, and I think about six weeks in the barrel, so it's it's not a big sweet hit in the in the face. It's delicate, mm. it's gentle, and you get little idiosyncrasies of the barrel as well as the amazing Shiraz grape coming through. I'm, I'm in love with this. It's silky smooth. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, this Shiraz gin from you guys. Yeah. So we start with, um, it's actually very similar to a signature gin, this one. So when it goes straight out of the steel, there's only difference that we put heaps of Tasman and pepper berries. When I say hips, it's hips. When it's straight out of the steel, you'll be like, oh, it's too spicy, way too spicy. <laughs> but as it's aging in the barrel, it really turns down all the spiciness and it comes more of the, on the aftertaste. You can get the Tasman and pepper berries still, but it's not as pungent. It really turns down all the juniper as well. And, but it gains in complexity and oakiness and the tannins from the wine. You've got the vanilla nuts from the oak barrel. There's just so much going on that it's halfway towards a whiskey as well. Um, yeah, so barrel age, yeah, Shiraz barrel age, not the Shiraz gin to say, but more of a Shiraz barrel H gin. With the get, the there is vanilla from this and lovely, lovely like liquid yeah. caramel. I could For drink, sure. I could drink a whole bottle of that without even realizing. That's, <laughs> that's the, uh, the oak from the barrel coming through, right? Mm. With that beautiful Shirazi crust, and and yeah, and. I'm just geeking out and loving on this gin because the the lemon myrtle, the pepperberry is still coming through. It's yeah. really it's, it's it's everything's there singing in unison. This is a, a cracking gin, Polly. Um, really, really sensational. Do you know whereabouts you guys get the barrels from? Um, and and yeah. how big they are and that sort of thing. Yeah. So Lark Hill, we like working with Lark Hill for the Canberrans or no, well, maybe non Canberrans, maybe, you know, Lark Hill in Bengando. Um, so they make biodynamic wine. So something we like as well. And they love it. And they, we love their wine as well. Yeah. So we get the Shiraz barrel from them, from Chris who was there. And then we put our gin in it. So we edge it from anywhere between six weeks and a couple of months. Depends. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. What's interesting is that each batch will be different. So some of the batches uh, stain, yes. get a lot more stain, so it'll be a lot more red, and some of them a lot more orange. The taste is still very similar, but the color may change from one batch to another. And and you wouldn't believe what's happened with this, Owen. We've we've got to this tasting. We managed to get six bottles. We've used five of them for the tasting. There's one bottle left, and now Underground Spirits are actually out of this batch as well. So there's one bottle of this left. You popped it in the chat. Someone's already probably got it. It's probably got it. Um, but there's only one bottle of this batch of the Shiraz Barrel Gin from Underground Spirits 
available. And I wish, and if I was to have this foresight, I would have just kept it for myself. Yeah, no, I'm thinking the same. Lucky there's half a bottle here and that will just have to do us. Yeah, I might have to disappear this evening. So if, wow. if, you, if you do really, really enjoy this, Jim, which, which I do, we're going to grab a couple um, when things, uh, when the next batch is out, which I think is sort of like looking at the, at the first batch, yeah. Also, I'm sure you can grab them from the Underground website there as well when, when it's back in stock. Just being ages a moment, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The April should be ready, bottled. So, I'm definitely going to pour myself a little bit more of this one as well. well top um, top. Oh, mate, you got all right. Right. <laughs> you want a little bit? okay, dokey. Oh, that's all right. Hope you're not dry, <laughs> um, so let's put our garnish in there. This is again another one that doesn't need it, and these, these gins often don't, but. The reality is that about 90% of people drink gins with g and so or in gin cocktails, and I, I'm the same. So we always try and mix it with a tonic, which matches it really well, or a mixer of ginger ale or soda. And in this case, we are going to go with the Fever Tree Light. So our Fever Tree Light. Apologies. Thanks, Owen. You can mute yourself there. There we go. The Fever Tree Light. <laughs> Pop that in. I don't think it's going to need much. And then to garnish this one, Owen, I'll pop a little bit in there. And if you could pop a little bit of ice in there for me, for you, I would be in debt to you. Uh, the we're going to add the the dehydrated capsicum. So you should have a little bit of dehydrated capsicum. Let me come up to the camera and show you guys a little bit of dehydrated capsicum. If you thought, what's that little bit of? Well, it's actually a bit of dehydrated capsicum now. I would have uh, I would have given everyone a little bit more if I realised that capsicum would shrivel up that much in my dehydrator. But <laughs> alas, here we go. So pop your little dehydrated oh no capsicum. Interesting. And, uh, away we go. What do you reckon about this pairing, Carly? I think it goes... Much made in heaven. Gives <laughs> a bit of a weird one, but it actually goes very well because it's a savory. I feel like anything savory goes very well with it because it's so okay. So I tend to put cucumber. Uh, if you have like a herb garden, go for it. If you have chili and basil, it goes so well with it. Um, rosemary is great as well. Flamed orange peel. Yeah. No, go crazy. This is sensational. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Um, and what have what have you guys been doing in um, at the distillery and and around at the bars? What have you seen interesting cocktails with this? I could even think like a, like a some sort of twist on like an old fashioned or a Manhattan or something. Yeah, yes, yes. Old fashioned is a great one with it because um, it just it's a sip of old really. So I like to say like I don't like to drown it too much. I'll put too much tonic with it. That's why we've gone for the light tonic because it's not as strong on the quinine taste. So it doesn't overpower as the gin. Um, so it goes well with it. Or you could just use soda water, or half soda, half light tonic. But yeah, definitely old fashion is a great one. Again, the Negroni as, as well goes very well with it. it really like tones down the bitterness of the Campari. Um, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just loving it. it. This is this is awesome. And and I've got a, a good amount of this to sit here and enjoy. Oh it. yeah. Golly, uh a, a question in the chat from from Jose, and this is one of Jose's favorite questions when, when he's here. Um he always says, What's your favorite botanical apart from juniper in, in gin? Um I think it's one that we use in another gin, actually. <laughs> That's fine too. <laughs> uh, the rainforest and usage. So we made a limited edition with the Botanic Gardens, and in which were nine native botanicals, and it was just mind blowing for me to learn about all those botanicals. Uh, I've been here eight years, but I'm French originally, and I had no idea there's so many possibilities and tastes. And um, yeah, so one of those nine native botanicals we used was rainforest and usage. It was all grown from the Botanic Gardens in Canberra as well. It's just amazing to work with them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's really cool. Owen, oh, do you have a favorite botanical? <sighs> Everything that went into this. Everything that went into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a, Owen's, a, Owen's a whiskey and a bourbon yeah, man at heart. Yeah. So you're just, you're this, this is the first that's got a bit of barrel influence. Yeah, and, it's that lovely vanilla. And, and you're just thinking, take me back to what I know. Absolutely. Um, but no, this is, this is sensational. Yeah. For, for me, I am, and it's, 
a little bit cliche, I but I love Tasmanian pepperberry, and <laughs> yeah. I think it's just been revolutionary in, in what it's done for Australian spirits. But you've got to be careful with it. Um, just dealing with Tassie pepperberry, like one pepperberry corn to a liter of of distillate, and it's too much. Um, you've really got to play it right and peg it back. And, and that's why a lot of people use the, the leaf instead of the actual berry itself, because it, it can be finicky to, to distill with. Um, Collie, in, in terms of, and as I just asked Clyde before, Underground Spirits, what have you guys got in the works? Because I know you guys are always doing really cool stuff. What's, what's next on the agenda? What can we expect from you guys? Um, well, Floyd coming up again. So... Yeah, so every year we develop a, a gin for Floyard. So Floyard is a flower festival for the non Canberrans. Uh, it's a huge flower festival in Canberra. So we usually have a bar there for a whole month and we also produce a limited edition gin every year for them. So this year was a little bit, well, last year was a little bit different, but hopefully this year will actually be a proper festival and we'll make another one. Um, we're working on a copy of Otta as well. Coffee vodka, like awesome. Well, the caramel vodka is already on the shelves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, we're working on mini bottles, releasing mini taster bottles as well. And what else? And again, the botanic gardens um, was still at the moment still selling the ad crescendum, which is which was normally for the 50th anniversary, which was last year. But because it's been a complicated year, we're still selling it. We're hoping for some more projects for them as well, so which will be very exciting. Just love working with them. Yeah. It's it's really cool. Have you, have you ever been to? Do you know what Floriade is on? New to me, relatively. I haven't, I haven't explored much out of Melbourne, yeah. so so I, I I actually lived in Canberra for two years. Um, so the truth is out. There's a little bit yeah. of ACT in me too. Now this was when I was <laughs> this was when I was about four years old to six seven years old i don't have many memories um but one memory i do have is going to floriard which is like the longest running flower festival botanic and i just remember painting some sort of garden gnome there at floriard which is like one of the best flower festivals in in the world so there's a little That's bit awesome. of uh a little bit of go. flower history for you today on there you go flower history will come in handy at some point yeah i'm sure that'll come <laughs> trivia night at some point for you yeah. um so Colley, thank you so much for joining us tonight and especially at such late notice. Um, trying these these gins have been amazing. And as, as, as I get to the end of, of I guess, this, this G&T, the, the capsicum is sort of starting to take play over mm. the top of, of, the, of the gin a little bit yeah. in a nice way. So, like, initially the, the capsicum wasn't as prominent, but now it's, it's getting a little bit capsicum -y and I like it. And... And I think that that's what we're going to do with a few of our tastings moving forward on. Yep. Um, so, Collie, thank you so much. And if you're hanging around, thank I'll jump you. back to you at the end because it's been amazing to have you and chat Underground Spirits. And what you guys is, do is, is truly sensational. And we're so excited to have the caramel vodka on the shelf as well as these two <laughs> beautiful numbers. And when this one comes along again, I reckon we've got a few more customers. So Most thank definitely. you, Kelly. But, but talking about getting a little bit more experimental like this on with the capsicum, <laughs> mm. We're, we're, I guess, we're at the end of our Australian gin tour. Now it's the ACT. Darwin's got one distillery, perhaps two distilleries, probably a few people making yeah. it, but not in a legal way that we can do a gin tasting like this. <laughs> so we are basically at a point now where the first round of our Australian gin tour is, is, is over. When we finish the next two gins, of course, but we're going to keep these tastings going. Um, now there's a... Uh, there's, I guess, the question of what we do next and, and how we do it. We're obviously, we've got a few really cool in-person tastings which we're working on and, and are going to happen and COVID permitting, we're going to do them and it'll be and it'll be great. If you want to be the first to hear about them, jump on our Castavino's Gin Club Facebook page. Yep. That's where we'll announce them. Always. But the next tasting, Owen, is really, really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick with the Australian theme, but we're going to get fruity. Because fruity. Who doesn't love a bit of tutti fruity? Love a bit of tutti fruity. Absolutely. Fantastic. So the next gin tasting is going to actually be you know, not too far in the distant future. It's going to be on Thursday, the 1st of April, because the Friday is Good Friday. Everyone doesn't have work on a Friday. 
we, we probably, you know, have other things to do, like eat fish on yeah. the Friday. Yeah. So we're going to do the gin tasting on the Thursday night when everyone finishes work, give us all something to do, and we're going to get fruity. Now, we're tasting some amazing gins. Um, Owen, tell us about this first one. So first one we got, Bush Apple from Applewood, Australian yep. gin. Absolutely fantastic. Applewood has done quite a few. We've done we've tasted quite a few of their gins over these we times, have. haven't we? Great friend um, of the house. Great friend of the house. Lovely gin. Beautiful bottles with the wax styling. Uh, what else have we got, John? Let's get fruity. So we're joined by Imbued Distillery. Um, we're going to taste a couple of their gin liqueurs there. Um, this one's like a, a honey spice at 35% ABV. So it could technically still be a gin probably, but I like the fact they've called it an Australian gin liqueur because of the maceration. And then the other one, which is a, a prickly pear um prickly pear prickly pear australian gin prickly pear? maybe we are maybe we aren't we'll see how we go but this one is is going to be awesome um as well as these ones on um the one i'm where, most looking oh, forward yeah. to and for cherry gin i'm a massive cherry boy this so is awesome. this is going to be absolutely so fantastic the, to try the anthra cherry gin i've wanted us i've wanted us to have this one in a tasting for ages but haven't really necessarily been able to do it because of it hasn't quite fit into any of the tours so far, but and the cherry gin. This is a cherry bomb. Um, and so so that's why we're doing that one. That one, um, there's probably another couple that haven't arrived yet. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I can't. Uh, um, I think we've got one of our gins, Jono. Oh, that's right. So um, Wandering Cobbers, the, the next Wandering Cobbers. And is it about on? Can you see it anywhere? Uh, I think it's somewhere. Probably without a label. Oh, it's probably without a label. So the next oh, one we'll with Cobbers collaboration we're doing is a fruity style gin. It's with an amazing gin distillery. We're not going to quite announce it yet, but I will say it's with a distillery in Tasmania that we've worked with a lot. So that's going to be really good. Um, and that's the next Wandering Cobbers and we'll be launching that's it in fun. that tasting. Uh, and for that tasting, Owen will be here running the chat. Jose will be in Tassie, actually. Um, so Jose will be joining from Tassie. And we're very lucky we'll be joined by Henry from Applewood. So oh, Henry's fantastic. gonna come in and stand next to me. And um Henry loves loves a bit of back and forth. He's an absolute legend. So it's gonna be a ripper of a tasting. So grab your tickets for that now. And if you grab them tonight, you can use the code Juniper and get 10% off. And then everybody is gonna have a fun time. Uh amazing gin so far tonight, but we definitely haven't left the the least the last. These two are amazing. They're more of the sort of the, the sweeter dessert style, maybe not so much the French Earl Grey, but leaving them to the end here is, is done because they're perfect gins to, to finish the night. So, Owen, we're going to pour first from the Canberra Distillery. Before we jump over to Paul, let's pour our 30 mils of the French Earl Grey. So Fantastic. grab your French Earl Grey, and we're going to start with that one first. This is very up my street as a Brit, just in name alone. Look at that colour. Beautiful blue. You would have had one of these most mornings before you went to school. Of course. As a, as a right primary right, school. Right child. age of five. Yeah. So amazing. Oh, oh yeah. Absolutely incredible. And French Earl Grey, there's so much I want to learn and hear about this gym, but that's enough of me talking. Um, we're joined by Paul, who's the, the general manager at Canberra Distillery. Uh, Paul, how are you, mate? I'm very great. Thank Thanks you. so much for joining us tonight and, and allowing us to, to try these awesome gins. A, again, we go a little bit back to front. We've, we've got the French Earl Grey in here. Before we talk about the Canberra Distillery and everything amazing about you guys, tell us a little bit about this gin in particular and, and what we've got in our glass at the moment. So with the Earl Grey, um, so it's actually a collaboration with a couple of various companies here in Canberra itself. Um, so first of all, um, her Canberra, it's an online blog, um, pretty much for um, the ladies in Canberra. Um, so they do a lot of um, reviews on restaurants and bars, and they're very much up there with the scene in Canberra. We also collaborated with the Tea Garden. Um, so in this particular gin, you've got over 30 different botanicals. Um, in particular, you've got bergamot and lavender. Um, they're the two ingredients that give you that real deep purple colour. Um, I'll leave you guys in a second to um, to do the special party trick on this particular gin. 
um, it changes colour. Yeah, nice. So very, very popular. Um, it's probably a number one seller um, at the moment. Um, and it's absolutely sort of delicious. Um, you can have it straight neat on ice. Um, it does tend to favour with a little bit of tonic water um, because it accentuates those botanicals and really sort of come out of the gin. Amazing. Do you want to do the trick, Paul, or do you want me to do it? Oh, you can do the trick. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take the lead. So everyone, don't worry about, um, about putting in the tonic. Just, just watch, watch me as I put it in. I'll do a little close up, um, and we'll get, we'll get a good look at it here. So, this is, this is the trick. Here's the blue tonic. Feed the tree refreshed in the light. In we go. Look at that. Hey, hey. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. Amazing. Woo! That is amazing. So. That's awesome. So for, for everyone at home, have a little go. It's the refreshingly light Indian tonic. That's what we're pairing up with. Play around and enjoy it. You don't want to miss that moment to, to put in that amazing tonic. And oh, and there's another one there for you if you like. I can crack Absolutely. that over for you. A little bit of ice in there. Um, and if we may as well put the garnish in there now as well uh, while we're adding everything. And we've got some fun garnish here. So the garnish we're going with this one is the wild blueberries. So that's the little the little ball sort of garnishes out of the we've got some freeze dried raspberries and these ones. So these ones, pop them on in. It's a it's a match made in heaven on and it's and it's really good. So now we've got uh, our our G and T, which was the uh, the French Earl Grey gin with the Fever Tree refreshingly light and the blueberries. Uh, Paul. I want to know everything about the Canberra Distillery. Um, so with the Canberra Distillery, so I'm actually relatively new, to be honest with you. Um, I've only been here for five weeks, um, just started just after Christmas. Um, so honestly, I'm learning every day and I absolutely love it. Um, the Canberra Distillery is has been around since 2015. It was actually started by the owners... Um, or by the owner in his garage in Kayleen. Um, so back then, producing very small volumes and the fact that like every single um, every single bottle was poured and labelled by hand for the first two years of the operation. Um, from there, we've moved to our current premises where I'm right now, and that's out in Mitchell, um, which is on the northern side of Canberra um, in the industrial area. Amazing. Are we able to, is, is your laptop mobile? Can you give us a little bit of a, a look around the distillery? Yeah, so this, this area here is our shop front. It's relatively new. Mm -hmm. um, and so we opened this up in November last year. Um, so this is the area sort of coming through here. And a sneak peek of our full range of products. So there's 18 products available. 18. Bloody hell, we could 18 do different products every tasting from... every two nights. <laughs> well, I had a group in this afternoon. They'll here for two and a half hours. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, do you have your, your still there in that part of the distillery or is that a little bit further back? Yeah, yeah, it's further back. I'll take you through. We'd, we'd love a tour. We love, This is like a guided tour of the distillery. This is all. <laughs> Sneak peek. Um, so the area I've just gone through, so this area here is our bottling area. Um, we've got a whole new machine just, just arrived this week, um, which we're yet to sort of unpack and get operational. Um, but that's going to change our capacity from bottling. Um, usually we do about 700 bottles per day. This is going to allow us to do 700, 700 to 800 bottles per hour. So it's really sort of going to scale up our facility. Um, moving into the distillery floor. So we do our tastings in the middle of the distillery. Yeah, nice. We've got we've got one of our stills here. What's it? What's its um, name? And I'll let Does you in on it. Oh. We haven't named this one yet. 
Good day, yet. Paul. Um, May I suggest Chino? This, this, <laughs> yeah. So this particular one, right. so this one here is 500 litre. Um, so at the moment, so we, we're not actually doing the stilling out here at Mitchell. Yep. Um, just waiting for a few um, T's to be crossed and I's to be dotted. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, before I, we should have get operation. Yep. Um, but we'll be bringing in the 200 litre still and then we'll be bringing in our 2000 litre still plus a um, fermenter as well will be coming into this space. Um, above us, we'll be building a mezzanine level, um, which is where we'll move into doing events such as Christmas parties, um, hen parties, birthday parties, all those kind of fun things. Um, and just creating a whole experience for people. Amazing. It's, it's awesome. And it's, it's great. And I'm so glad we've got to see it, I guess, at the bones a little bit as it, as it builds up. And I can't wait to come down in a, in a few months time and, and everything's operational and, and see it. Cause it looks like a, a beautiful spot. Um, Paul, this, this gin now that, that we're trying the um, the French Earl Grey, can you just briefly tell us a little bit about the the botanicals and the makeup of this gin and I guess what, what you think about the mix we've added with it tonight? Um, so this one here, it does, it's got a very delicate process. Um, it's usually the process over about a month, month and a half, like a six week process um, where we sort of go through with the base gin. Um, but with that base gin, we do add a couple of extra things into that. Um, so there's an Earl Grey tea mix that we put into it, which is a collaboration with the tea garden, um, along with like the, the usual so juniper berries, cardamom, cin um, cinnamon, um, coriander, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this particular gin, the color change in properties is more in the chemical reaction. Um, so it's the pH level. So as soon as you, you don't necessarily need to add tonic water, it can be soda water. It can even be like fresh lemon. Um, if you just want to have it more of a neat style yeah. drink. Um, this one here, perfect as like a party starter. Mm -hmm. um, so really easy on the palate. Um, quite easy to start with this one um and very popular very yeah. very popular uh, I, I can see why for sure Definitely. this is this is awesome before we jump on to the next one and normally we sometimes we do five sometimes we do six but we've, we've done six gins tonight so we're being a bit cheeky but we're, we're getting through quite well before we we move through to to the slow gin um i saw you well, most of your other range there we're fascinated by everything can we have a little look at at a bit of your range and what else exciting you've got there at the Canberra Distillery. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. That'd be awesome. So we we'll start off with our dry gin. Um, that's the one we first started off with, uh, juniper, cardamom, and um, the cinnamon. Um, and then we move on to our winter gin. Um, this one is sensational. Um, we've actually got a cocktail on our website that uses a pea puree. Um, this one team with that is absolutely fantastic. So check it out on our website. We've got the summer gin, if you can all see that. Um, so this one has over 30 different summer fruits from around wow. Australia. Think strawberries, passion fruit. You've got blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Fruity. Yeah. The list goes on. This one here is our second biggest seller, the blood orange and gin. Um, fantastic all round drink um, in that it goes with just about everything and it even is great as a um, basic for cocktail. Mm -hmm. We have our barrel aged Negroni. So this sits in a barrel with smoky timbers um, for over six months before we sort of pull it out. Um, we've done the mixing for you of the gin, Campari, and your, um, your vermouth. Um, and literally straight over ice is sensational. All I do suggest, though, is using the zest of an orange. So just slice off the outside of the orange, give it a twist, get that zest in there. 
another collaboration with Madura. Oh, down the down truffles. There it is. Woo-hoo-hoo. The truffle gin. Yes, now we, own, we only have eight cartons left of this one. Um, we can't actually make it again until the truffle season finishes. So that's a very limited one, which is, I know you guys wanted me to send this one down. Ah, sh- we weren't supposed to. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, we wouldn't we wouldn't have had enough to sustain demand look, because I'm expecting we will run this. This one will run out within the month. Paul, truffles and is just uh, when you say truffles, I start to things happen in my mm. brain. And Jose as well, um, who's in the in the conversation as well, where we're truffle fiends. Yeah. And when we saw you guys have got a truffle gin, we thought that we would love to jump at that. So when the next seasons of truffle is through and your truffle gin is is up and about and we've got enough, let's let's pop that in another tasting because absolutely um, yeah. it, it's awesome. it will get made in late September or October. Hey, that works for us. If, it, if it's got the word truffle in it, then we around it. Um, <laughs> It, in, incredible you guys have got an amazing one and, and then the, the canberra fog and canberra fog is the base with the anesthes and then we've got our vodka range so we've got your must vodka the queen bee queen bee must vodka goes fantastic with a glass of prosecco um start off a hen any of the hen parties with that one yeah that's a popular one Ooh, then you go coffee, to coffee, coffee, coffee vodka. Let's go. Oh, We've got passion fruit yes. vodka. You guys are doing some cracking stuff. ACT's got vodka monopoly here. <laughs> well, got vodka tasting question mark. Lemoncello. We love lemoncello. Crazy. Well, uh, we and then we've got coffee liqueur. This, this one is a cracking one if you want to have an espresso martini. My recommendation is this one teamed with a um like a vodka like any vodka yeah, would nice. do um and then have some real coffee and well I, I think fantastic. having a look at your offerings there paul we're probably and and what we've seen tonight as well particularly from um underground spirits and i know clyde's got a, a vodka there as well maybe we'll have to do an act vodka tasting because yeah it looks like there's enough amazing <laughs> vodkas in the act just to fill out a we're vodka gonna go to state to do one That's and fantastic. and the yes limoncello <laughs> We, we love limoncello. We've got uh, Don Giovanni of Melbourne makes some amazing limoncello. And of course, there's some other great ones around Australia. So we're, we're not shy to no. wanting to do any tasting at Casa Venus. The reason we do this is because at the end of the day, spirits are our passion. We love being able to taste them and, and share them with you guys. And, and this has just been another one of those nights. And every time we do one of these, it's like the ideas just keep bubbling around and it just keeps on going. Yeah. And the breaks more don't and come more on. and more. There's there's just some amazing stuff out there. So Paul, what I might do now is is pour the slow gin. Um, and the French Earl Grey in, incredible. And there is a little bit of this some available. The truffle gin, unfortunately. Not from us, but you can probably get some truffle gin from Paul and from their website. Um, but hopefully we can do a tasting for the, for the next season. Fingers but crossed. for now, let's pour out a little bit of this slow gin. You're holding those up very, like you're like you're ready to go. Like a, you can come down a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. All right. So slow gin. Um, slow gin is my personal favourite. Yeah. Amazing. So slow gin using, I understand, um, Blackthorn bush is it from Tasmania or what's yeah, the process? So we, yeah, one? so the slow berries are all hand picked from Tasmania. Um, slow berries originated from the UK, so Tasmania has very similar sort of climate. Um, so with the slow gin, it's a process that takes six months to do, okay. um, and we actually have the skins as well. So very much like a, a, a red wine. You do get that aftertaste of the tartiness. Initially, you get the sweetness, um, which is the the very sort of strong sweet berry. Yeah. So this is uh, this is highly reminiscent of my childhood being being from the UK. We uh, used to have damsons in our back garden and slows just over the back fence, and we used to be uh, friends with people who would harvest the slows and make them into gin. And yeah, reminds reminds me back to home. Amazing. Now, this is, 
this, this is really, really good. I need mean, to get a little bit technical, um, Paul. You, do you know what, what gin we're putting into this and it must be a maceration and how long that takes? Um, so I'm not fully across this one here. That was actually done by our mm. distiller before I sort of came on board. Um, from what I understand, um, so there were the berries were boiled in with the in the still, um, and then so that was like the start of it. And then we also had it sitting in like a thousand liter vessels. Yes. Um, so we made four thousand liters at at a time. Awesome. Um, so we had them in like the the four larger vessels, and we actually added the slow berries to the vessels as well. Um, and it's just a process over sort of six, seven months where it was just a constant sort of testing and tasting and just sort of till we got it absolutely right. Um, and then they were sealed up and put away just to mature a little bit more with the slow berries in there. Yeah. Um, and then when it came to sort of the bottling, so we um, literally filtered the whole lot um, all the way through. Um, and then filtered it again so you get like the real sort of clearness um, so it doesn't have any like any impurities or anything like that through the, the slow. It's mm, awesome. Oh, can you find me another sample of this summer? I, <laughs> I think there might be one in there. I, I need a little bit more of this. Yeah. This, this is yeah. more as I, I – and, and I guess we've, we've prolonged on perhaps putting the mixer in this because the nature of it, it, it is – almost dessert like i don't i don't think you need, to, it is, yeah. need yeah. A, a mixer in there uh but it, it'll be really interesting to see what happens so again i'm gonna plunk in a little bit of ice you've got another one there a wee beautiful bit. a wee little dram in you okay. go on and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this one we've obviously got the little thing of berries left there now they're freeze-dried raspberries so i thought what better way to finish it off than with your freeze-dried raspberries so Hopefully you've gone through all your botanicals, uh, your, your garnishes, and you don't have any left. But I'm going to pop in the freeze-dried raspberries. And we're going to add in the Fever Tree Indian. So uh, what we've got here is a really sweet gin. Uh, and in, in, an, in the most beautiful nap way but being as as sort of like as sharply um sweet as it is it can handle indian tonic so indian tonic as we know is, is the one we're going to put in that's got a lot of aromats um and it's going to change the game a little bit it's not just going to say hey let's let this drink continue on like if we were to put a soda in it's going to come in and say all right let's play and let's can't even, can't even speak it's that good it's um it's complimenting that delicate sweetness it's just oh it's really fantastic it is it's bloody bloody good isn't yeah, yeah. it but there we go. It, is, you'll see. it is exceptional <laughs> this is this is really stunning um yeah this this with the indian is just sublime um and we, we've got a few of these bottles i want to link if you want to grab one of these bring that um in. and you can also grab them from the canberra distillery too um Paul, this is this is sensational. This is a great drink. Uh, as we ask everyone, because we, we love to, I'm a nosy. The Canberra distillery, I, I guess you guys, the big thing about what's going on is the, the new layout that we've seen and, and the bones of that that's being constructed. But what can we expect from you guys in the next few years and what are some of the aims of what's going on down there? Um, so we're doing, we're working a lot with um, local businesses. Um, as Chloe had mentioned before, there's lots of um, stuff within Canberra where um, we're going around with local, um, with the local companies. Um, so we've done a couple of collaborations with a place called Enigma Chocolate, um, which is in uh, the hub of the city in Braddon. Um, um, so they've actually like infused our summer gin and our slow gin in a couple of chocolates. Um, and it's actually made by a French chocolate maker and they're actually sensational. Um, we're about to, we're just waiting on our um, partners at Four Wind Winery. Um, so we're going to be, so last year we did a Riesling gin um, and that came about because of the, um, 
the bushfires in Canberra. So because of all the like the fires throughout New South Wales and all the grapes were unusable because they're all smoky. They had a smoky flavour to them. So we got hold of the berries, infused it together with our gin, and it was a success. Um, so we're actually going to do that again this year. Um, so that's actually coming up very soon because they're about to harvest. Um, from there, we've got a couple of little sneaky things, things in the in pipeline. The back um, you, don't wanna... you don't have to yeah. expose them, mate. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, just, um, and yeah, pretty much like just moving into like doing events and just getting more people into the distillery um, because the number of people actually interested in what goes on behind the scenes is amazing. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I, and I think we're seeing it a lot in the gin industry. Have you muted us there if you can? You've come back. Mate, yeah. You've had too many bloody slow gin and tonics. Too many slows. I, I think a great thing we're seeing, and this is an amazing thing about the gin boom in Australia, is how interested everyone is in the behind-the-scenes process of what's going on. It's showing that as consumers, we're really interested in the process and, and that's a really healthy thing. We love knowing about where our things are coming from and in turn, it means that we're going to be, you know, supporting better better gin companies like the ones we've tried tonight and putting better things in our body as well. So, Paul, thank you so much for, for joining. Um, it, it's been incredible and uh, you guys have some amazing stuff in the works. So it's going to be great okay. to, uh, to stay in touch with you guys as, as Castavinos, but also as the Castavinos Club, everyone here. And we're definitely, I think there's a couple of the truffle gin, mm. the truffle as it's got to come. Uh, you can't say truffle and, and not bring it over to us. So we're going to do something with that for sure. Yeah. Just a quick one, guys. Um, just so while I've been online, um, so that discount code for the 10% will also work on the Canberra Distillery website as well. I okay. Need- so that. They'll work for the entire month of March. Awesome. Fantastic. Beauty. I'm going to get on there and get myself a truffle gin so I can start doing a little bit of prep. <laughs> doing his research. It's the thing about truffles, though, and they last about a week when you get them. And then wow. they're, they're all pretty much gone. And truffle season goes for about a month. It gets to the, the fourth week or the third week of truffle season. You don't have any more truffles. You think you're over them. You've had enough truffle macaroni and cheese. <laughs> but you realise about six months later that you're just craving it again and yeah. you can't wait for it to come around so truffle season here we come this is this, um, this is what's happening with the gin yeah craving it so so amazing and and i guess to do a little a little run around so thank you so much paul um it, it's been incredible to learn about the the canberra distillery and we can't wait to stay in touch with you um i can see clyde still there hanging about so clyde i might uh put you on the the spotlight there and uh, say thank you so much for joining us tonight. How have you found the tasting? It was fantastic tasting, really strong lineup. So thanks for putting it on, and all your um, customers and yourself, you're invited to to come out to Big River, and I'll show you around, and we can chat all things gin. Appreciate it a lot, Clyde. Your, your Sin Gin and the Canberra Gin are exceptional and it's been great to try them yeah. and we're so excited to keep working with you guys because inside to your distillery tonight and um, and joining us so we can learn so much about what, what it is you do. My pleasure. Now, Collie there, she might have gone off. We'll go, Collie might not be there in photo but Collie thank you so much and, and learning about underground spirits was fantastic um, it was it was amazing and you guys too have some incredible gins and I think the caramel vodka is, is going to be on caramel the shelf vodka. here definitely. so we're definitely looking forward to that one with a lot of excitement now um, how do we remove pin and then it's us oh there we go um and paul as well who who just left we said thank you to now i want to say a quick thank you owen to everyone who has who has joined us um i don't know if jose's connection is is good enough there to uh to join us and and say g'day maybe maybe not i don't i don't know how it is it if it is then um then say you know where's jose ah oh, he's he's probably at the pub or something to it's bad all right we'll yep. leave jose be 
but to Ellie, um, to Rach, to Josh, to Joe, to Lauren, to Back. Laura, to everyone, Laura there, Pat, the, everyone. the crew on Jennifer's iPad who have been there from the absolute start. You're all absolute guns. To Kim, to Sally, to Pat, to Shirley, to Steve, Drew. You've just you haven't you haven't given up. To to Warren, Tom, Tracy as well. We, we we'll see you next week. We'll get um to to Rosie Rue there on the balcony. Good on you, mate. To Paul, to Collie, to Emily, to everyone here um, who has been a part of the Australian gin tour that we've done. It's been one hell of a bloody ride on. It's been it's been amazing. We've 12 months. Maybe? 12 months, and I think so far on these Zoom calls, we've you know, seven, seven states. Over a thousand people have tried incredible gins from mm. great parts of the world. It's it's been an amazing thing, and it's been so great to be able to do. We're not stopping because it, it no. wouldn't be right. We're going to keep doing this, and we're going to keep doing um, amazing gins and things that come across our table. So Absolutely. for the for the let's get fruity, this is the question mark bottle. This is the next wandering cobbers gin. Uh, it's a beautiful fruit gin from Tassie, which is going to be awesome. We're going to try that alongside the bush apple, alongside the anther, alongside the MVU. Grab your tickets now. It's going to be an absolute blast. Um, but on, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of a, a toast um, to, to say goodbye. for. The, have you posted the link for the tickets in there? So everyone I have. Grab one. We'll double them up. Post it in there again. Uh, people will be able to find it. There we go. But I mean... Uh, Thank Go you, Sarah. It's a good support. Next month. So if if everyone could raise their raise their glasses for, for one last time of the tour, but we're gonna keep it keep it going. And and all on the toast goes that some ships Sips. are wooden ships. There we are. And those ships might sink. But the best ships are friendships. And, and to those, those ships, ships we, we drink. drink. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, See guys. you very soon.